those who will be watching, and we greet everyone here in the name of Jesus. We are so grateful for what the Lord has done through God's great mercy. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning with verse 3, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. Isn't that powerful? What a deep and abiding, abiding and profound love lavished upon us. One verse before we sing some songs of praise to God and thanks to our Lord Jesus Christ, songs that mention Father, there is but one God, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. The Father from whom all things come, he's the source, and for whom we live. And there is one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. The Father, the source, and the Son, oh, he, he's the provision through whom. We come to the Father. We're going to do something old-fashioned to start with. We're going to sing three verses of doxology, and then we'll unite our hearts in praise together. Now, if you can stand and sing, please do. I won't tell you to be formally seated till we're finished our singing session, but if you're tired, you can sit. But let's, uh, let's start. Oh, there's Janice with the organ. She's very organized, isn't she? There you go. We, <laughs> she's actually organized and blessing the church. Now she's organized publicly. All all right, let's sing it. Praise God, God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Our Father. Father who doth reign on high, bids all through Christ to come draw nigh, his Son as sacrifice he gave, to break sin's curse and freely save. Praise to the Father, Spirit, Son. Praise to the blessed three in one. Praise Him, ye ransomed from the fall. Praise Him who reigneth over all. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We join Ludwig von Beethoven as we sing joyful, joyful. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. The hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of dark away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth, and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around center of unbroken praise field and forest vale and mountain flowery meadow flashing sea chanting bird and flowing fountain 
call us to rejoice in Thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed, wellspring of the joy of a living, ocean depths of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us. Brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music lifts us sunward in the triumph song of life. What a fellowship, what a joy divine leading on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leading on the everlasting arms. I'm leading, leading, safe and secure from all alarms, leading, leading, leading on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, I'm leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning. On the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. I'm leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Hallelujah. He is Lord. He is God. The song we're about to sing really was one that ministered to me powerfully. A year ago in February, our daughter was in the hospital facing major, major surgery. Had to do with her cancer, and there was the bursting of her bowel. And we didn't know if she would live through the night. About a year ago, I was learning this song to lead it. And this is the song that just kept going through my mind as, as we were wondering, will she live or will you take her, Lord? She's still here, and we thank God. But if he took her, we dedicated to her, as a her as a child to him. And so we thank God he is with us always sing along if you know this i love you lord oh your mercy is unending all my days have been held in your hand from the moment that i wake up until i lay my head I have lived in your goodness, O oh God. All my life you have been faithful. 
All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of your goodness, O oh God I love your word You have led me through the fire in darkest night you are close like no other i know you as my father i know you as my friend i have lived in your goodness oh god all my life you have been free All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of your goodness, O oh God Your goodness will follow after, will follow after me your mercy will follow after, will follow after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness and mercy will follow after me. All oh, your goodness, your goodness will follow after, will follow after me. Your mercy will follow after, will follow after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness and mercy will follow after me. All my life you have been free. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of your goodness, O oh God I will sing of your goodness, O oh God Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're so good. Thank you. You made us. You know us. You understand us. And oh, how we thank you for your wonderful love. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I have a maker. He formed my heart. Before even time began, my life was in His hand. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and He me when I call. I have a father. I have a father. He calls me his own. He'll never leave me no matter where I go. Hears me when I call. He hears.
hears me when I call. Hallelujah. As we prepare our hearts for communion, remembering our Lord Jesus, as he spoke the words, he said, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. Today we will participate in, in a, a, a celebration, a commemoration that God ordained that represents our faith in him, represents the blood and the body. Jesus said, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. That's, that's who he was. I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep. My sheep know my voice. And just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. Thank you, Lord. As we prepare our hearts, let's sing a song. It's written by Stuart Townend, How Deep the Father's Love. How deep the Father's love for us. You can sit if you want. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son. To make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one. Bring Many sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out. Among the scoffers, it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that. I will not boast except in the Lord. I will not boast in anything. No gifts, no power, no wisdom. But I will boast in Jesus Christ. His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, in heaven above. Thank you in heaven above, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful song. What a, an amazing reminder of, of what we are about to celebrate. We have a heavenly Father, God Almighty, who loves us today, who loves us today, has loved us always and always will. I love the classic passage of scripture that many of us who were raised in the church, maybe some who were not, but do you know the verse so well? that declares the truth of our Heavenly Father's love for us. That which we're about to celebrate around this table of thanksgiving. For God the Father loved the world, past, present, and future. He loved the world so much that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, came to earth, died, rose again, even now at the right hand of the Father, interceding on behalf of us, and will come again one day to receive those that are his own and redeemed and called after his name. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That's the hope that we have, dear friends, those of you who are here and those that are watching online, that through Christ Jesus, this life is not the end. As much as it's abundant and a gift from God, as John 10, 10 reminds us, we have the hope, the hope of heaven to come through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And those that have gone on before us, we shall be reunited and we will be together again to worship the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> all because of the love of our Heavenly Father. Aren't you grateful this morning? Aren't you thankful? I know you are. And as we celebrate around the Lord's table today, you would have received the emblems as if you would have come in if you haven't, and we will ensure that you receive one. If you're joining with us online, we. We announced earlier this week by way of Facebook that if you could, please join along with us. Grab an appropriate beverage and a wafer, a piece of bread or a cracker and join together with us online as we are here together on site. If you're visiting with us here today on site or online, here at Heritage Valley Assembly, we believe in open communion. That is this, that if you are truly a child of the Lord, receive Christ into your life as Savior, you can take of these emblems in remembrance of him today. In remembrance of him today. Pastor Matthew comes to lead us in scripture and leading us through these emblems in prayer. Let's join together with thankful hearts today as he comes and leads us, Pastor Matthew. Let us, let us make sure our hearts are right before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't do this just on communion Sundays. We should be doing this every day in our lives. Right, right. Always making sure we're right before yes, the Lord God. Jesus Christ. Yes. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus God. Lord God. Purify us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Purify us, Lord. Purify us, Jesus. Forgive us, Lord, for anything, God, that we have done against you, Jesus. Cleanse us, Lord, right now, we pray. Amen. I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 22, starting in verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. 
So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. They said to him, Where, where, will, where will you have us prepare it? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you there. Follow him into the house that he enters, and tell, and, and tell the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large, a large upper room furnished, prepared there. And they, and they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he reclined at the table and with the apostles with him and said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, but I tell you that I will not eat it until it is finished in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it am among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Let's take the cup. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, God. Thank you for your precious blood, O oh Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord God. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it mm -hmm. and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, take likewise the cup after they had eaten. Sorry, I did it the other way around. <laughs> the Lord understands. Let's take the bread. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your broken body. For your mm. Thank you for your death. Thank you, Lord, for the pain that you took, Thank you for Father. Your resurrection. Yes, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is poured out for you. Yes, this is the new covenant in my blood. Mm -hmm. Let's take the cup now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus God. Father, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your precious blood. Yes, yes. And your body, Lord, that was broken, that was spilled on the cross, Lord, for our sins, Lord. So that, so that, Lord, that we would be made right before you, so that you could offer the, the, the free gift of yes, salvation yes, to Lord us, God. God. That it is by faith alone. We don't have to work our way forward, Lord. Thank you, Thank Lord. You, Lord, that we just have to humble ourselves, push away our pride, and know and recognize that we are a sinner. We need cleansing. Thank you, Lord, for your salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Lord, I pray you would open up our eyes, Lord, yes, Lord that we would see more of you in our lives, that we would see more of you, Jesus. We would recognize, Lord, how important the gospel is, how precious your salvation yes, is. Yes, yes, Lord. Lord, may we never, never, ever take it for granted, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would keep us away from sin. Lord, for those who are struggling in addiction of any kind, whether it's alcoholism, drug addiction, or maybe it's depression, 
or pornography, whatever it may be, Lord, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I pray for strengthening over those people who may be here or watching or listening who have addiction in their lives. Father, I pray that you would loosen this bondage off of them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For Lord, you are a God who is in the business of breaking bondages. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the only one who heals. None of us can. None of us have any strength to do any, any such thing. It is only you who can heal. It is only you who can deliver. Only you who can redeem people. Who can save people. Yes, Father. We can save them from drowning. We can save them from a fire. We can save them from a storm. But Lord, only you can save their souls. Yes, yes. How precious is a soul to you, Lord. Jesus. Even one. Yes, yes. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Pray. Oh, Lord. You know, I once... How precious a soul is. I once heard a story, uh, uh, Bill Pranker was talking about this, where he was going up in the north to preach the gospel, and he's going across all these ice fields, you know. It's just the Arctic. Nobody lives there. And he comes up, and there's just one guy there. One guy. And he, and he was like, God, is that it? Just one person in this whole area? And he preached the gospel to him. He gets saved and he realizes how precious a soul is to Christ. He went all the way there, tracked all the way there just for one soul. Hallelujah. Something the Lord laid on my heart. When I was in the back there, when we were singing that last song, I know there's, there's, there's fathers out here and who are listening, who are watching, who, are, who have sons and daughters who have strayed away from the Lord, or those who have, who have passed away, and, and they don't have kids anymore. And the Father wants to say to you that He also grieves with you as well. He feels your pain. He understands. He sees your heart. He feels your heart. Yes. And I saw an image. I saw Father God as the great shepherd. And he was leading his sheep, those who were hurting. And he brought them over to a creek, to a secret place. And he led them over and picked up his hand with water and he, and he lifted it up to their face to drink, to their mouth. That's what the Father wants to do to you. He wants to give you strength. He wants to restore you. Those who feel dry, those who feel weary, those who feel parched, He wants to refresh you again in the name of Jesus. The Lord sees your heart. He understands. He knows. Yes, he does. Sometimes we think God is a distant God. We think he's so far, he can't see my troubles. There's other things more important. No, God cares about yes, you. Yes, God cares for yes. every single one of his children. Yes, yes. No matter who you are in Christ Jesus, no matter what age, yes. he cares about you. Father, we pray, Lord, for those who are fatherless, Lord. For those who are fathers and have no kids. Father, we pray that you would give them rest. We pray for restoration in their lives. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would give them peace. For those who, 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 whose, whose kids have run away from you, they are away from the Father God. I pray for restoration in the name of Jesus. I pray for a revival in their lives in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would lasso them. 
you would lasso them, Lord, and draw them back to you in Jesus' name. That your angels would be around them. We pray that you would protect them. We pray may they feel the conviction of the Holy Ghost and the love of Christ around them, Lord. We pray, God, that the connections that they have with other people, other worldly people who would lead them, keep leading them astray, we pray that you would cut those connections off in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, we pray, Lord, that you would protect them, that you would shield them in the name of Jesus for godly men and women to come around them and to draw them back to you, Father. We pray for the parents, we pray for family members, that you give them words of wisdom, Father, to say to them, to speak truth into their lives, Father. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak healing into their hearts. Those who need healing, we pray healing that they would be right before you, Father. In the name of Jesus, healing in their bodies and healing in their souls and healing in their minds. In Jesus' name, no hindrances whatsoever, God, of what you want to do in their lives. No hindrances, no bondage, Lord, no chains. In the name of Jesus. We pray that you would draw them to you. Lasso them, Father. Draw them back in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray a hedge of protection around every one of them. You know who we are thinking of, Father. You know who is aching in our hearts, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, God. We thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God for the work that you are doing. Thank you, Lord God. We give you praise and thanksgiving. Just whisper their name right now under, their, under your breath. Just whisper their, your, their name to Abba Father. the names. The Lord hears the names. He hears the names. We cry out for their salvation. We cry out for their deliverance. Siblings, daughters, sons, cousins, aunt, uncles. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sorry, folks, for going so long. I just feel this is, we just need to intercede over them. I feel this is precious right now. We need to cry out to the Lord for them right now. Their salvation is on the line. And Save them all, Lord. Save them all. Save them all, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Save them all. Convict them, Lord. Convict them where they are, Lord Jesus. Open their eyes. Open their eyes and then realize how serious this is, God. That their soul is on the line. That their salvation is on the line. That there is an eternity, Lord. Draw them to you, Holy Spirit, we pray. God, we desperately pray for this. We plead, we intercede for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for Pastor Larry. I pray that you would anoint him in this in this sermon today, Father. Anoint his lips, Lord. May he speak prophetically, I pray, Father. Give him the words to say, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, may you touch our hearts. May you show us, Lord. May you teach us, Lord. Open our eyes to your word. As the psalmist prayed in Psalm 119, open our eyes to your word, we pray, that we would have understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet. The sound that saved 
a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Pastor Bob, we love and appreciate you. You and I have worked together for many years. Love and trust you with all of my heart. I know you are here and that God has something on your heart. I want to open this pulpit for you to just share what God has given you. Would you come, Pastor Bob? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God. Matthew, when you were talking about Bill Prankard and one soul, the value of a soul. Yes. I know, I could hear God saying, Bob, there's a soul. There's yes. a soul. Yes. And uh, I can describe that person. Oh, God. The soul is a senior citizen. Mm. You're a man. You're online. Mm. You're watching. You've known the Lord. Mm. You've walked with him. Oh, God. Mm. But I've never heard this term before. Oh, God. But the Father is calling you as a prodigal father. Mm. This is oh, not God. to a son. This is to a father. Mm. And I'm hearing repeated 1 John chapter 2. He says, I'm writing to you little children because you are forgiven for his namesake. Yes. That's the Lord's table we just had. We're forgiven. Yes. Yes. And then he says, I'm writing to you fathers because you've known him who is from the beginning. Yes. Yes. And I yes. can almost see you and feel you. Mm. You're a father. Mm and your family is not with you, you are alone. Hmm. Hmm. But you didn't leave them. Yes. They yes. left you. Oh, God. Oh, God. And this is the hardest day of the whole year for you. Oh, God. That's why you couldn't come to the house of the Lord. It's just too painful. Jesus, God. You feel outcast. Oh, God. You feel it's my fault. It's my fault. You've gone over it. Oh, so many God. times in your head. Oh, God. And you don't even know what the purpose for living is. You, you've lost God. purpose for living. Jesus. I'm not speaking to this by knowledge. I'm speaking mm. to you this from the heart of God. Yes. I, I, if I let it go, Larry, mm. I'd start crying right now because God is crying. Yes. Amen. He cries over one soul. The creator mm. of the universe yes. weeps. Yes. Over he does. one yes, he does. soul. Yes. yes, yes. And this scripture is for you. Our whole gathering today, let it go aside. Let's all pray here right now for this yes. one soul. Yes. Everybody, Lord just God. start praying. Yes. And oh, Jesus, God. through the Father, is oh, saying, Come God. home, we Father. That one, Lord God. Come home. Jesus, God. Come home. Yes, Lord God. Lord You're God. forgiven. Yes, yes. You're forgiven. Yes, it's it's yes, like it never yes. happened. It's okay. Yes, Lord. Yes. You don't have to answer yes. before the throne of God. Oh, God, yes. Your yes, sins Lord. are not only forgiven, they're removed. Oh, God. They're removed. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, God. Amen. Amen. I'm just Amen. new here at HVA. Jesus, God. 
but I just feel it's symbolic. I don't even know if you're in the Edmonton area. I don't know. But I feel like Abba's got his arms wide open to this father. Yes. And he's saying, come on home, Dad. Yes. 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 Come on home. Yes. Amen. Come on home. You're welcome. Yes. Come on home. Yes. It's okay. You come on yes. home. You hold your head up. Yes. You come down this laneway. Yes. I'm yes. running to you. Yes. And he's throwing his arms. Yes. Boy, I can see it now. Uh, He's throwing his arms oh around this son with Jesus the bald God. head. You're yes, bald Lord God. because you're old. Yes, Lord God. And he's holding you, and as he holds you, Amen. you've Amen. become Amen. a son Amen. again. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, we rejoice yes. for one soul today. And we just say by faith, yes, God. Welcome home. Yes, amen. Welcome amen. home. Amen. amen. And I just want to encourage you. Yes, amen. amen. Your first opportunity. Amen. 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 Thank you. If you live in Edmonton, Praise you're welcome here at HVA. But wherever you are, amen. may God lead you to yes. a fellowship of people amen. where you can feel. Yes, God. I'm home again. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Bob, for being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Trust that one you've received now, the love of God. He's welcomed you home. He's welcomed you home. Isn't it great to be part of the family of God? And in this uh, sacred moment, as we sense the presence of the Lord, I'm just going to ask you to stand, would you? Because God has given us one another as brothers and sisters in the Lord. And I'm going to ask you, would you take a moment or two to greet one another this morning in the Lord and, uh, and just to enjoy one another's company? You can do it by waving or banging elbows or, as someone said to me, in two weeks we'll actually be able to shake each other's hands. <laughs> However, would you welcome and greet one another today in the Lord? For those of you online, go get yourself a cup of coffee or phone somebody and tell them, good morning, good morning, God bless. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Isn't it wonderful to be gathered together here on site, one with another, and to sense the beautiful presence of the Lord here with us? Hallelujah. And for those of you online, we welcome you. It's such a joy to have you joining with us as well uh, here at Heritage Valley Assembly this morning. Well, we want to say a happy Father's Day to each and every one of you who are here and those of online that are dads. If you happen to be a father here on site, we want to honor you today. And not just if you're a father, but if you're if you're um, a man, a male, because <laughs> there are some that are maybe not quite men yet, but they're, they're there. And uh, we want to honor you today. We thought, you know, that old expression that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. And so, uh, ladies, when you were uh, with us on site for Mother's Day, we gave you a lovely flower, and I know many of you are enjoying them still. But we thought, men, you kind of think a little bit differently. And so we went out and got gourmet jerky just for each and every one of you. Now, this is, uh, this is produced in the local Edmonton area. And it's got Happy Father's Day on there. And every one of you are going to get a good piece of, I believe it's beef jerky. Now, this is going to last me about 30 seconds on my way home. <laughs> and uh, it is delicious. I've heard that this is absolutely magnificent uh, beef jerky. So men, we love you. We thank you. Happy Father's Day. And to you men, every one of you are going to get this by way of uh, a, a gift and uh, a blessing to each and every one of you uh, this morning. We also uh, want to remind our young adults that this coming Tuesday at 6.30 p.m., weather permitting, that you'll be having a time of fellowship and uh, togetherness 
at uh, Pastor Matthew's home, and the details are available to you on the Young Adults Facebook page of HVA. And also, we want to say thank you again, dear ones that are on site here, as well as online, who continue to worship the Lord through your giving of your tithes and offerings. We are so grateful as a church that uh, we are able to continue to serve uh, our community through the resources that God has given us, and it is our desire to continue to steward those well as unto his glory. If you wish to give and you're here on site this morning, you can do so by uh, leaving a, a tithe or offering in the container there by the back door. And if you're online, you can do so by going to our website, heritagevalleyassembly.com, and just follow the giving links. It's easy to do so. And we thank you in advance. God bless each and every one of you for your wonderful, wonderful giving today. Turn to someone and say, I can hardly wait for July to come. <laughs> and you're going like, why July? Why not July? <laughs> it's a great month. It's a great month. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Isn't God good? Amen. 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 Well, my dear friends, it is a continued delight for us to uh, celebrate Family Appreciation Month here at Heritage Valley Assembly. And today... And throughout this coming week, it will continue to be our desire to uh, honor our families, but by focusing our minds, our hearts, and our deeds as a church with gratitude upon the men of our congregation and of the community at large. And we honor each and every one of you men, and in particular on this Father's Day, uh, we want to focus our thanksgiving and gratitude to all of the dads that are on site and online as, as we, we honor you. I think we should give our dads a real round of applause and thanksgiving, shall we? God bless every one of you. God bless every one of you. It is a delight to have you with us here today on site and online. And it's on this very day that we traditionally set time aside each year to honor our dads that I would like to share with us for just a few moments uh, a beautiful uh, passage of scripture from uh, Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through 32. If you have your hard copy Bibles with you or digital, I'd encourage you to, to, uh, to follow along with me as I read this passage of scripture on a topic that I've entitled The Ultimate the ultimate loving father. Reading from the New International Version, a well-known passage of scripture that most of us that have been followers of the Lord, or perhaps even if we haven't been followers of the Lord, have, have known and heard of this classic story. Some refer to it as the, son of, uh, the story of the prodigal son, the others the parable of the lost son. But it's found in Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through 32. And I want to bring out just one thought this morning. There's, there's many tracks that I could follow from this beautiful story today. But for the sake of time, I just want to bring out one thought from this, from this portion of Scripture. But I really want to read the story because all of it's worth, worth reading. So beginning in verse 11, Luke chapter 15, we read these words. And Jesus continued... There was a man who had two sons. And the younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. And so he divided his property between them. And not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had, and he set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. And after he'd spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. And so he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. And he longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. And when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am 
starving to death. I will set out and I'll go back to my father and say to him, Father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And so he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. I, I got to think that his dad had been looking for him almost every day since the day he left. Because even when he was a long way off, his dad was positioned already to spot him. Now, isn't that like the Heavenly Father? Oh, I better not stop there. Let's carry on. <laughs> and when he was a long way off, his father saw him and was what filled with compassion for his son. And he ran to him and threw his arms around him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But, but the father said to his servants, quick, <laughs> bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the, the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a party. Well, that's not quite the way it says in my version, but it says, let's have a feast and let's celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is now found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field and when he came near the house, he heard music and dancing and so he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed a fattened calf because he has he has him back safe and sound. Hmm, and the older brother became angry and refused to go in. Isn't that sad? So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat, so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is now found. Praise God Almighty from this beautiful passage of Scripture. Writing his book entitled Real Family Values, noted author and pastor Robert Lewis, some of you know his name, he's associated with Focus on the Family. He tells a fascinating story about a remarkable heartwarming discovery that workers made at the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, Ohio in the winter of 1993. Indeed, while renovating a, a section of the museum, they uncovered a, a photograph that had, been, that had been hidden for years and years and years in a crevice underneath a very large display unit. And as they uncovered it, they revealed that there, there was stapled to that picture a handwritten note scribbled in pen by an adoring individual which read like this. You were never too tired to play baseball with me on your days off. And you always came to watch me play in all of my games, no matter how busy you were with all of your other important duties. Dad, I appreciated you then and even more today. Thank you, Father, and I'll love you 
forever. What a beautiful note. <laughs> and interestingly enough, upon further investigation into the background and circumstances, the photo and its accompanying note, museum officials came to discover and to learn that upon the day of his induction into the National Baseball Hall of Fame, a very famous and renowned baseball player from years past had done what? He had secretly hidden the photo and the, the clipped note, and he had placed them away where no one could see on that important day of his. Why? To express his appreciation and devotion for his father to whom he owed everything. In fact, contacted later by some sports reporters who were following up on this, on this unusual occurrence and inquiring as to his purpose in doing so, that iconic baseball player simply said this, I was blessed and privileged to have had a Hall of Famer dad. A Hall of Famer dad who not only encouraged me in the world of baseball, but more importantly, positively affirmed and instructed me in the big stadium of life. I owe him everything. And so I wanted him to reside along with me in the annals of baseball history and life itself. What an amazing, tender, and creative tribute to a Hall of Famer dad by his famous son. I loved when I came across that story as I read it. I loved it, and it touched my heart. And thankfully for some of us who are here on site or online, on this Father's Day 2021, you too can acknowledge that you've been graced with a Hall of Famer dad in your life. And like many of you and yours, I too can this morning gratefully and wholeheartedly declare that I was honored to have a Hall of Famer dad in my life. My precious papa known as Albert Leonard Gottfried Lindoff. <laughs> or as my mom used to fondly call him hubby. I couldn't figure out what that meant until I realized it was her way of her affectionate term for husband. Hubby, hubby. I thought that was my dad's first name for years and years. <laughs> And I'm bragging on my dad today. He's been gone for 25 years. I can, hardly, I can hardly believe it. He was a consistently decent, good, and godly man. Dad, if you're listening, just turn your ear away. I don't want to embarrass you, but I want to say thanks as a son. He showed me the importance of loving God and of loving others, and particularly one's spouse and the entire family. He showed me the importance of loving the circle of friends that God had given me. He showed me the importance of treasuring one's flock, because he was a pastor as well. He showed me the importance of loving those within the community at large. I witnessed my father on many occasions reaching out to people that were not of the Christian faith, some cases even contrary to the Christian faith, and, and sharing with them in all kinds of different ways. I remember him saying in medicine at one time, he said, son, you know why I take my dry cleaners to that particular place? And, he, and I said, no, because I knew he was a regular customer. He said, well, he's one of God's people. He's a Jew. And I want to make sure he gets my business because he's a son of the living God. <laughs> and he said, I just through my business, I want to show my love him. And that I, that I want to extend in, in my kind way uh, loyalty to him. And in so doing, treasure, I saw that time and time again where he reached out to people who are totally outside of the church and loved on them in practical ways. He did very little preaching with words. He did a lot of preaching with his actions. He taught me not to complain about problems, but solve them instead with common sense and creativity. To always give my best effort, whatever God put in front of me to do. To put others first, to practice my faith, even when at times I may be struck by doubt or fear. To have fun in life, to live the adventure with gusto. 
My dad was a fun guy. If any of you knew, he was a spiritual man, but he always had time for play in his life. He always encouraged us to play lots of sports and to be involved in fun with others, to stay curious about life and to keep growing. For as he always said, we're never, never too old to learn and to make a positive difference in the world. 25, 27 years ago, my dad was learning how to surf the net. That's what they called it back in that day. You remember? He was learning how to use a computer. He was more computer literate than I was at that time. And he said, well, this is the thing that's the latest, and I've got to learn it. But, Dad, you're 80. Doesn't matter. I have a good brain. I can still learn. I'll never forget uh, just seeing that example being displayed to me of his passion of learning. And, of course, I'll never forget his dad jokes. Perhaps you'll never forget your dad's dad's jokes. You know what I mean by the dad jokes. These are the ultimate groaners. Oh, I can remember him saying, Son, why do fathers take an extra pair of socks when they go golfing? I don't know, Dad. Why do they pair, take an extra pair of socks when they, golf, when they go golfing? In case they get a hole in one. Ugh. Hey, son, what did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? No, Dad, what did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? Supplies! Uh. Hey, Larry, why do seagulls fly over the ocean? I don't know, Dad, because if they flew over the bay, we'd call them bagels. Oh, okay, Dad, enough. No, oh, hey, I got one more for you, son. Where do you learn to make banana splits? I don't know, Dad. Where do, where do you learn to make banana splits? At Sunday school, of course. Oh, and then the, the one dad joke that he played on my mom. She, she didn't laugh, but we did. Came home one day and said to her, Violet, I just sold our vacuum cleaner. She said, you did what? You did what? He said, well, of course. But all it was doing was collecting dust. <laughs> oh, <laughs> those are dad jokes. You never forget that stuff, do you? I tell him myself, and my son reacts the same way I did when my dad told him to me. Yet in spite of his many dad jokes, I am still so very thankful for, and I love to this day, my Hall of Famer dad. Yet there may be some on site or online today, and you're unable to celebrate the fact that you were blessed with a Hall of Famer dad as, as I was. You haven't known the, the genuine and trustworthy love of an earthly father. And you're here this morning and you're asking the question, is there an answer for the void that's been left in my life? Perhaps, just perhaps, there are someone or some individuals today on site or online who had a loving father but love has been sadly lacking or missing altogether in some of your other relationships within your life. Perhaps with another parent or with a sibling, a spouse, a child, a grandchild, a nephew, or a niece. And you may be asking today, is there a solution to that kind of emptiness in my life? There may be some on site or online today who genuinely think or feel that love, care, and, and respect is largely absent from your world of acquaintances, from friends, colleagues, other individuals or groups in your life. And you may be genuinely asking, is there resolution to this kind of challenging, trying predicament in my life? There may be some in our audience today on site or online who once knew the love of God. But now you are far away. You are far away from the Lord. And you're asking, is there an answer to my lonely existence? If so, I'm here to say and proclaim good news in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the word that I've got fabulous news for every single one of us. And the fantastic announcement is this, that no matter where you find yourself in life, you have the ultimate, did you hear me? The ultimate loving father. 
And the ultimate loving Father is the heavenly Father above. And he is pursuing you with all of the, his capacity and all of his strength that he has within him to meet you where you are and to take you to where is best for you. If you will submit to him. Now I know this because Jesus declaring within this beautiful story of Luke 15, 11, 32, he presents several great truths, only of one which I will speak this morning, that speak, that refer to the Heavenly Father's love for you. And the one that I want to focus in just for a few moments this morning is this. Jesus speaks and teaches us afresh as he did 2,000 years ago to those that heard him utter these words for the first time. He echoes them again through his word to us this morning. And that is this, that God's love is limitless toward you if you are here this morning and find yourself in any one of those categories that I've shared. If you're online this morning, God's love for you is limitless. I am struck again as I study this glorious biblical narrative that despite the waywardness of the rebellious son, the father's love of his boy was without limit. It was characterized by an, an abundance of grace, pushed down and overflowing of mercy, of love that was certain, steadfast and sure, just as the heavenly father's love is for you and for your circumstances right now today. But let me remind us as well that God's love is not only boundless toward you and your situation, but knows no limits in the lives of your family. Boy, it's interesting how the Spirit of the Lord has led this theme already, and it's just confirming His Word uh, today. Last night at 10.30, I scrapped my message. That sends a preacher into a bit of a panic. And God laid this passage on my heart. And I went and sat out in my car. I chugged down some Tim Horton's coffee and I worked into the wee hours of the night. And what God was saying to me, to say to us, on site and online, and if it's just for that one person that we heard of this morning, if you are that prodigal, God's love is limitless toward you. He's reaching out to you and to yours. To your family, your friends, your colleagues, your neighbors, those within our communities at large. God loves the city of Edmonton. There are times when I critique our city and the Lord chastises me and he said, it's okay, you can critique as a citizen, but I don't want to hear you criticizing as a child of God because I love this city. I love this city. Don't you speak of the people of this city in that manner. The people that I gave my son Jesus Christ for. His love is beyond measure. His love is eternal. It does not quit or diminish or let go in their lives or circumstances either. For as the great songwriter Frederick M. Lehman so beautifully described, and this song hit quick in my heart at about one o'clock this morning. I just started singing it out loud. And I googled the words because I only know four words of every song. And it describes God's limitless love for you and yours. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The wandering child is reconciled by God's beloved son. The aching soul again, the priceless pardon one. Could with ink the ocean fill, and where the skies of parchment made, where every stalk on earth a quill, and every one a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would what would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. And then I couldn't contain myself. 
Oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong it shall forevermore endure, the saints and angels' song. O love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forevermore endure, the saints and angels' song. you're here this morning, you're online, God is delivering a message to you firsthand. His love is limitless toward you. This past Friday, and with permission I share this, I noted a special Facebook post by one of our precious church family members. Jennifer Q. And she was marking with fondness the two-year anniversary of her beloved husband John's two-year passing this past Friday. She writes on that post, June 18th, 2019. Two years have passed. I can't believe it. Greatly loved and so missed by us all. John, we love you forever. And when I read that post on Friday, immediately upon reading it, I was taken back to a comment that John made to me on one of the visits that Harold and I would often make when he was in his last months of life. Just before he he passed into the loving arms of God, and uh, he said something like this, and I had to kind of scribble it down. He said, Larry, Knowing and living out the unlimited love of God throughout much of my life has been the game changer for me. His boundless love has always made the difference in my life. Hallelujah. And then he followed it up by saying, For God so loved the world (laughs) that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now I'm convinced today that if John could be with us on this Father's Day 2021, and wouldn't that be grand, Jennifer? He would again affirm that God Almighty is the ultimate loving Father. That his love is true, sure, and endless for us all. That the beloved God of heaven and earth is truly the number one Hall of Famer dad. (laughs) And I'm absolutely sure that John would declare that our heavenly father and his love for us will make the difference in our lives. No matter what we face, no matter what's going on in our circumstances, as we go forward, God's love can provide salvation for us and for our loved ones. I want you to hear that because there are some of you who have loved ones who are not following the Lord. God can and will provide salvation for them. God's love can bring reconciliation and restoration into broken relationships with family, friends, and colleagues. God's love can pour forth the the ointment of healing into the many areas of life's challenges and disappointments. God's love is without limit. God loves you today. He is your ultimate Loving Father 
the greatest Hall of Famer in all of the universe. God is. And Heavenly Father, we thank you today. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, oh, how we love you. Oh, how you loved us. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for adopting us into your family and making us your children. Thank you for being our heavenly parent who loves us unconditionally, who cares for us unendingly, who provides for all of our needs. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We are so blessed to be your children. And Father, we, at the conclusion of this service today, we have sensed the direction of your Holy Spirit from the beginning to the very end. The message that we hear loud and clear, both on site and online, is this that on this Father's Day, we have the greatest Father of all, Heavenly Father above. Thank you for those fathers that you gave us that were loving and caring. For those that didn't have fathers like that, we pray that, Lord, you will continue to bring healing into their lives. Father, there might even be dads that are here online today that feel like they have failed in their pursuit of parenthood because their children haven't perhaps turned out the way they had hoped or dreamed. Lord, by your spirit, would you bring just a sense of healing into their hearts and minds today? May that they know that they have done their very best. They have done their very best. And that, Lord God, you will do the rest. And you will abide with those prodigals and you and your good time. As the story reminds us in Luke 15, we'll bring them home. We'll bring them home. And the meanwhile, Lord, we will continue to love them and we will continue to pray for them. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity where, Lord, there are relationships and other areas of our life that are lacking love and a sense of health and strength. And our families, our friends, our colleagues, or wherever we may be found, Heavenly Father, your love touches those areas of our life as well. We just pray you'll pour into our hearts and into those circumstances your compassion and your love. Father, you are a miracle-working God. The Bible says, cast all your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. And now, Lord, we give these things to you. They are yours. We will continue to pray and do our part. But, Father, we pray that you will lead and that you will guide. Thank you, Abba, Father. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Gary, would you come and lead us, Amen. please? Amen. Just, just before, well, 30 seconds before Pastor Larry read the love of God, uh, I asked Janice to go find that song. <laughs> um, and if you recall, we began reading about our God and Father yes. who's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in yes. Christ. Yes, yes. He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless Amen. in His sight. Amen. And in love. Yes, yes. In love, He predestined yes. us to be yes. adopted as in His love. sons Amen. through Jesus Christ in accordance Amen. with His pleasure and His will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Thank God. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. 
So we began reading that passage, and we end declaring that passage, and we sing of that passage. So I think our team has that song ready. If you can show us, you're going to pace us. I have to follow you, but we'll sing that. Let's get that first verse up there, the love of God, if we can get that on our, our uh, there we are, good, let's stand. And again, you're going to pace us, uh, our operator there, and we're going to have to follow you. Let's sing it together. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty can bow down with care. God gave his son to win. His every child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. O love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. We wait for that next verse. There it is. When years of time shall pass away and earthly thrones and kingdoms fall, when men on here refuse to pray, on rocks and hills and mountains call. God's love so sure shall still endure all measureless and strong. Redeeming grace to Adam's race, the saints and angels song. Oh, love of God, how rich and how measureless and strong it shall forevermore endure the saints and angels song i think we're looking for that verse could we with ink the ocean fill there it is could we with ink the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made were every stock on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry nor could the scroll contain the whole though stretched from sky to sky Oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and Song, just our voices. Oh, love of God, so rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. Jesus loves me this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, 
yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you love us beyond measure. Now, my dear friends here on site and online, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his lovely face to shine upon you. And may his love that is limitless be continuously bestowed upon you and yours. And may the peace of God that transcends all of the troublesome challenges of the day continue to guide and lead you not only today, but in the days to come. We ask these things now in the wonderful name of our Heavenly Father, who loves us beyond measure. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said in agreement, amen. Would you greet one another in the Lord? Man, make sure you get your jerky. Can't leave without your jerky. And thank you, those who have been viewing online. Thank you for joining with us. And until next week, the Lord tearing his coming. We'll look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless you.